Hey boys and girls, once again, it's Mike Kelly here at animatorsforum.com. And I'm going to talk about uh, the mirror function in my script and how easy it is to make walk cycles on the basis of that. So here we have uh, a typical rig. And this is very similar, by the way, to the rigs that you can generate from the character wizard in Anime Studio, as I'll show you, I think, in another video. But in any case, what we have are two target bones here that anchor the feet. I highly recommend using target bones for doing walk cycles or for actually anything. They're just stupendous. They keep the feet firmly anchored. And, um, and so you can, you, know, you can move them around and they, they move that leg and keep it down. And then, of course, with my script, you can easily parent them to this bone and then move, uh, move it around to wherever you need to be moving that bone around and position the, the character right. So you can really have all, all of the best of both worlds by using target bones along with the root bone here. But in any case, this is how simple it is to create a walk. Uh, there's really only three things you need to do, uh, three f keys that you need to create with a walk with using my mirror function here. I'm going to show you the mirror function. First of all, we'll, we'll set down a, a basic walk step. So the guy's going to have this low step, and he's going to be reaching up here, and he's got this step here, kind of like that. And the one thing you want to make sure of is that the bones that you're manipulating, you want to make sure you have keys set on all the frame. And I have... Uh, one function that does that uh, uh, called my key all function that's assigned to the K key but however you do it you want to make sure that all your bones are key that you're going to be changing because those keys then will change and so we'll move to the next step and the next step is going to be the up step so all we do is move over here and raise that foot up as he would be uh, stepping up and then bring this foot through as it would be coming through like that so it would be just like that down and then up and once again we want to make sure we have keys on all the bones that we're going to be manipulating here and then the last thing is the down cycle now i have uh, one of the things about the down cycle is you want to make sure that the root position is in the same exact position for the down cycle so i can bring it down here uh, properly and bring this foot over through here rotate but to, to know for sure that I've got the foot down proper or the root in the right, right place, I have this thing called root Y, which adjusts the root uh, on the basis of wherever you have indicated is that root frame. And you do that by using the control key on the timeline by setting your place start. And so I'm saying adjust the root to so equal there. So if I do that, you'll notice it adjusts it slightly up. And that's because when you do a mirror process, you don't want this root to slip downward. If you do, then as he walks across, as my cat will be glad to tell you, as he walks across, the uh, he'll he'll slowly start walking further down. And we're gonna we're gonna do a, a downward. I'm gonna show you a down step in a minute, but we don't want that to happen generally on a on a walking cycle. So. That's really all you have to do, just that one easy step. And then we just hit the mirror function. And the mirror function will then mirror the step to the other side of the body. So, uh, however, I want to show you something. Notice how that foot slips here. Watch this foot here. No time on my hand. No, see how that foot's slipping? That's because the mirror function will mirror whatever uh, the uh, bone is set on. And this is set on the root. Now, you're going to want to use that mirror rooting, um, the mirror of the root when you do a walk in place. But we don't want to... We don't want to mirror the root here, so we just want to select one of the feet, and it usually doesn't matter uh, which foot you select when you do that. So, and there, now it, see it plants firmly there, so it steps like that. The, I'll show you the walk in place cycle next so that you can see the difference. And then the other thing you might want to do is just to make sure that that root is, is properly positioned, is select that and, and hit that root Y so it's now exactly the same as it was when it started. So now as he walks across, he doesn't, uh, doesn't go any further down. Remember, this is. There's no such thing as a make art button, so you're, you're going to have to do a little bit of work and, and effort into it, but, um, but not a lot. Just, just, enough to, uh, <laughs> just enough to make sure you know what you're doing. So there you go. So there's a perfect walk cycle, and then we can save that. So that's how easy that was. And if you want to see, well, I can't show you the walk. I, mean, I, can see, I can do that. Let's just save it. We'll save it real quick. Save it in the bones, and we'll call it uh, test, because we have another test there. And then we come over to here, and then we load in test, and then you can see him walk across. So that's what he does. So then he can just walk. He just keeps walking across there. Um, so anyway, so that's so that's creating a quick and easy walk cycle. Let's do a walk in place, just so you can see the difference here. The difference in a walk in place is that we're not going to advance the root forward on the X line. We're just going to slide the feet along, and so <laughs> so as the as the feet move here. 
so in this particular position, all we want to do is bring that foot, uh, bring, sorry, bring, bring the, uh, the root up. And if you hold the control key, by the way, that constrains, uh, using my cycle, that constrains the keys. So that, that's a helpful way of doing that. And then this foot still comes through exactly the same way. So, so he's coming from there, coming up like that, key all. And then the last step is when he comes down again. And once again, to do down, all I have to do is with the root selected, I just hit that root Y and it sets him right down to where he should have been. And then I can move this leg forward and this leg over here to wherever I would position that. Let's make sure to see how that looks for, for a second. So if we do that, we go through and there we go. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, and then if we like that, then what we want to do is select the root. And remember, this time we want to use the root, except I moved it slightly when I did it. We want to use the, the root selected and mirror around the root. If we, if we mirror around the foot, it would be just as awkward as it was when we tried to mirror around the root when we were advancing it. So now if we just hit the mirror button, now it mirrors it through that, that foot. And then that's, that's an easy walk in place. This one we can actually uh, see how it works by doing the, um, the start and the end functions here. And then just do, you can see, easy walk in place. Okay, so there's nothing, to, and that's, you know, I can go through the same thing on skips and runs and jumps. Uh, it, it all works the same, basically. You just create that first step and then just mirror it across the body. But let me talk a little bit in detail about what you have to have to make this work. First of all, in order for it to work properly, your rig has to tell it or to be, to be named properly so that it knows, for example, that this bone here... Uh, so where am I at? That this bone uh, here is a mirror of this bone. It will mirror the upper body as well as the lower body. And vice and this bone and this bone are, are need to be mirrors of that. So to do that, you need to name them the same. So you notice this has a thigh, and this is also a thigh. But this has a D in front of it, and this has a U in front of it. Now you can use D and U. Those are the conventions that I use for my bones. And I use that for because all of the bones on this side of the body are D for downstage. And all of them are U for upstage on this body. You can also use A and B. You can also use uh, left and right, L and R. Uh, you can use an underscore. You can use a suffix instead of a prefix. So if you want to have this say, you know, bicep underscore L, you could, you could do that too. But you have to have some naming convention so that it can then seek out and find the bones on both sides of the body to do that. Uh, the good news is all professional animators that I know of always have a naming convention on their bones uh, to do it's weird that some of the samples supplied with uh, with anime studio don't because that's not what you would do in a in a professional environment but they're easy to rename and speaking of which let me show you an example so uh so we've saved that walk cycle and let's create i want to show you something just this isn't strictly on the mirror process but i'm gonna i'm gonna open up the um to show you that the walk cycle that we created can be used for a lot of uh, different characters that aren't necessarily, uh, no, not that one. Where's the character I have? Oh, lightning. <laughs> hopefully uh, hopefully my uh, computer will not blow up on where we're, where we're at here. I can't think of the name of this character now. Uh, with Victor's, where is this character? Oh, there he is, okay. Um, I'm going to bring this character, and this character is not named properly, and, and Victor is a very talented artist, but whoever did this rigging, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Fredo, the, the uh, Victors of talented artists, maybe the people he has working for him aren't, uh, aren't disciplined, but the rigging is not correct. So, um, and I'll show you that, because if you go to the, the bones uh, here, and you go to the bones, they're all, you know, that, they're not named properly. Uh, for our purposes, we don't have to rename a lot of these bones because we only need the root bone, which we can call root. And by the way, you actually don't have to have a named root bone. It will correctly figure out what's the root bone in, in your uh, stuff. But I would like to have a bone called root. And then it has to have uh, targets, uh, again, named properly. Um, I'll call this D target and U target. Again, you can use whatever naming convention you want, but for the purposes of what I've saved, those are the easiest things. Just those three bones will actually load in the bone walk cycle that I've already generated uh, because those are the only bones involved in that walk cycle. But if I had arm movements, for example, they wouldn't load in properly because these arms are not named uh, correctly. 
Um, but you know, however you name your own thing, that's that's how how it will set up. So so there's the walk that I uh, that I generated, and you can see it's it's not perfect. It's a little it's a little big for this character, but at least it works. So um, and just with the naming of those three bones. Uh, but let's go back to this because I want to show you some other things about generating other things. We can generate a down step same way. So uh, if this person is um, Oh, let's actually let's have him go up the stairs. That's more that's more fun. So, uh, and there's my phone ringing. I'm <laughs> probably going to have to take this call. So I'll have to pause this. Hang on a second. Part two of this. <laughs> this is just not my night for making uh, for making video tutorials. All right, here we go. So I'm going to do uh, what was I going to do? Oh, that's right. I'm going to do a <laughs> I'm going to do a step up. So. I'll, uh, I'll start this character and we'll, we'll put a foot. Now, because I want to have this to be the first step, I also want to have the other leg on bent. Uh, the reason for that is I want him to be in the process of stepping. So this is a complete step. I'm going to show you how to use this with a leg planted first uh, when, when, we, uh, when we save this out. But to start with, when you're, when you're creating a step, you can think of this as a series of steps up here, uh, you want to have both legs in the process of stepping. And then the second step, of course, just like with our with our walk cycle, because it is essentially a walk cycle, just walking upstairs, is that it raises that foot, brings that up through there, and you can you can put this any way you want, however you however you want to have that person step upstairs. But usually that's the way somebody brings a foot upstairs. And then the uh, the last step is just up here. Now, I, I in this particular case, I really can't use the um, um, the root Y because that'll which is why it isn't on by auto, automatically because if I did use the root Y it would it would stomp it down to this position here which is not where we want it so we want it to be up to this position but if you uh, if you can eyeball it and you once again you know for example that this other leg is going to be bent the same way that this this leg's bent here so you kind of eyeball that to get it right. And, you know, just like with anything else, this is art. It's not perfect. If I had a series of steps here, too, it would be easier to kind of actually get these adjusted to, to that step process. But this will be good enough for government work, as we used to always say. So, uh, so there's the step. So that's really all we have to do. Again, that's all we have to do here. And then if we just mirror this process, and we want to mirror it on the feet, obviously, again, just because if we mirrored it on the root, that wouldn't, that wouldn't lock that foot down. And so there he steps up. So, so that completes that step cycle. So I want to show you this because we're going to save this now as a step up. We'll call this uh, step up. And now when we get to here, because I said, you know, originally the feet needed to be kind of in this bent position. If you wanted to have somebody down standing here, say they're standing before here and say the first step is up here. So you want to have them standing down here. And then you might have them um, take that first step as they're moving this leg. Oh, wow, it's really thundering. Uh, oh, I don't know if you guys can hear that on the video, but it is really thundering. Anyway, uh, what we can do is we can set a key and then we can load in the step up. And then what will happen is that it, it moves, uh, well, actually it moves downward because I have that foot selected. Remember I told you that you could have either foot selected? So if I, if I come over here and I plant this foot instead and then load in that step up, what will happen is that this foot will stay planted and then it will move upward from there. So that's really what you want to have happen is you want to have him see as he takes a step, he goes up like that and then up like that. So there's a way that you can that you can plant and step up. And that, by the way, that's why you have the ability to select either foot to plant when you're loading in the, um, the animations there. Um, let's see. So that's that mirroring process. I showed that mirroring. Uh, I guess that's about all I'm going to do on the mirror process, other than it's just dead solid simple. I mean, you can create walks, you can create climbs the same way. If you're going to climb, you might have the, you know, the arm uh, reach up and grab something, grab a uh, ladder or something. And, uh, and he will do that on both arms, so he would move his arms back and forth. Uh, he will mirror that process. So I guess that's about it. So that's, that's mirroring. I think I'm going to get just quit for the night while I'm way behind, as they say. Uh, if you have any questions, again, post them on animatorforum.com. Uh, there's no excuse now, though, for not being able to create a convincing walk cycle with both feet planted firmly on the ground and working correctly in a matter of seconds.